It's Friday, August 26. In the headlines, government allocating millions for school repairs. Virgin Atlantic increasing service from Jamaica. Regionally, there is a drive to increase Chinese visitors to the Caribbean via multi-destination tourism. Internationally, UK bracing for major increase in energy prices. And in sports, world's fastest women will meet on the track again. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I am Simone Absalom Gale. The Ministry of Education and Youth has allocated $210 million for critical repairs to schools across the island. In making the disclosure, Portfolio Minister Favel Williams informed that each of the seven regions within the ministry has received $30 million for the infrastructural upgrades. The minister was speaking at the 58th Annual Conference of the Jamaica Teachers Association in Montego Bay, St. James, on Wednesday. Minister Williams stated that so far, 97 schools had been identified for critical repairs. Of that number, tenders have been issued for 35 projects. Estimates have been prepared for another 34. Assessments are to be conducted for an additional 13, while contracts have been awarded for work to commence on 15 schools. Minister of Finance and Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark says his ministry has been working with organizations through the Public Sector Transformation Program to help them get ISO certified. At present, more than 20 companies have met the International Standardization Organization's approval. Through the Public Sector Transformation Program, provided resources for uh, consultants. There have been over 11 consultants and 25 technicians, I believe, who have been working in getting entities to be uh, upgraded to the ISO uh, level. And so far, we're pleased that uh, there have been 24 public bodies in Jamaica, in, I think the 24th includes PPC, yeah. PPC is the 24th, to, to wear the badge of ISO certified. Dr. Clark was speaking at a ceremony coordinated by the Public Procurement Commission, PPC, to celebrate their ISO certification. He delved into the necessity of the Public Procurement Commission. Now, the Public Procurement Commission sits at a very important nexus in the public procurement process. And it's a nexus in the process that's common, common to all procurements above a particular level. And I think that level today is $30 million. And because it's the common nexus, right, whenever there's an issue with procurement, people tend to look at the common nexus. So everybody comes to the nexus, whether you are, I was going to choose some names now, whether you are HART, or you are uh, Anti-Doping Commission, or you are Bureau of Standards, or you are a Ministry, everybody at some point comes through the PPC for procurements above 30 million. Dr. Clark notes that revised process of registering with the PPC has seen a significant increase in the number of registrations. So by making it easier to register as a supplier, what we have is more entrepreneurs registering to be a provider of goods and services to the government of Jamaica. I think the number is about 15%. Yes, the percentage increase in suppliers registered with the Public Procurement Commission over one year, only one year, jumped by 15%. And that is primarily due to the fact that it's easier, more accessible, more efficient to register because you can do that behind a computer screen. The Public Procurement Commission was established on April 1, 2019, in accordance with the Public Procurement Act 2015. The PPC is the public body, corporate, that has replaced the National Contracts Commission. Thirty homeowners got the keys to their new homes in Majesty Gardens, Kingston, on Wednesday. A total of 32 duplex housing units, 24 studios, Four one-bedrooms and two two-story three-bedroom units were developed by the National Housing Trust during the Phase 1 development. Prime Minister Andrew Honus was on hand. He says it is the government's duty to ensure the process of 
owning a home is easy and affordable. In keeping with my administration's push for the NHD to provide housing solution to the lowest income group, these units are being sold at a very affordable price to the beneficiaries. The studio units, which are 252 square feet in size, cost $4.8 million. The one-bedroom units at 417 square feet in size come at a cost of $6 million, while the three-bedroom cost $8.9 million. It should be noted, however, that these prices have been subsidized by the NHD. What does this mean? It means that the contributors of Jamaica to the NHD are paying for a portion of the full price of the unit so that you are able to afford the unit. In some instances, the subsidy would range from $1.7 million to $1.9 million per unit. Majesty Gardens Phase 1 was developed under the NHD's Community Renewal Program. This week, we continue our three-part feature on Jamaica's musical journey and how it coincides with Jamaica's 60th year of independence. We pick up at the emergence of the reggae genre. Curator of the Jamaica Music Museum, Herbie Miller, was at one point manager for one of Jamaica's most prolific reggae artists, Winston Hubert McIntosh, popularly known as Peter Tosh. He was one of the core members of the band The Wailers with Bob Marley and Bunny Wailer, after which he established himself as a successful solo artist and a promoter of Rastafari. Peter was a multi-instrumentalist. Um, a friend of mine once said to me, who was very, very close to all, all the whalers, he said to me, you know, the only instrument I never see Peter play at a trombone. It was a bit of an exaggeration, but what he was trying to say, he was so skilled at so many instruments. There's a song he has, I think is um, Jai is My Savior, one of them. We were together in Woodstock, New York, and we went into a little thrift shop, one of them little shops that, that sell use, use this and use a pawn shop, where the people pawn them things and get money. And he bought a, a miniature harp. And by the time we got back to Jamaica, there he was, composed and was playing the harp and a song. He was very quick with music. He, he played fantastic rhythm guitar. Some of the rhythm guitar licks that you hear, he actually innovated them. Um, the, the tonal quality, the texture of a guitar sound in our music, he is uh, the, 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 the one who I would say introduced some of those kinds of feeling. Mr. Miller lists songs published by the singer that were written as social commentary. Babylon Queendom Fallen, um, uh, a song like, say, in later years, Apartheid, African, Get Up Stand Up, which he co authored with Marley, uh, Legalize It. So many songs, you know. Peter Tosh was an advocate for the legalization of ganja. Decades after his death, the weed was decriminalized. What would he or his one-time band member, Bob Marley, be singing about now? But seriously, knowing them the way I did, I, I think they would still be crusading for things that they believed we should stand up for, for equality, Black Lives Matters, war in Europe, they saw these things much more than music, music and music, singers and musicians are seeing it today. And they, they addressed them. As I said earlier, when you're going to sing about the, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, the wars all over South and Southwest Africa, that he, <clears throat> Marley, 
Pablo Moses. With all the internationally recognized musical genres that have emerged from Jamaica, it's not a surprise that the idea of having a music museum surfaced. Mr. Miller says they have barely touched the surface. He has dreams. We need an archive. We need libraries to collect these things so we have access to them. Jamaica Music Museum Administrator Rosemary Duncan. Jamaica Music Museum it is an exhibition space, an archive and research facility for Jamaica's music, reggae and other forms. And its aim is really to preserve, promote and protect Jamaican music. She describes the experience of visiting the museum. A wealth of information on Jamaica's traditional music, pop, culture from the inception of music to now. She says it's open to the public. We have a lot of schoolers, children, primary school students and secondary school students who visit us. Most of our visitors are school students and we're encouraging the general public, adults to come visit. There's a lot to learn. There's a, lot, a wealth of knowledge and information here, and including the musicians, we encourage them to come. They'll be surprised to see the, some of their works and um, the works of their colleagues in here. And so now you'll have Ground Nation. Ten years ago, not many people could articulate what exactly was a Ground Nation, nor could they boast of having such an experience. But Ground Nation is now an integral part of the Reggae and Black History Month experience, courtesy of the Jamaica Music Museum. And it is a Rastafari term, ceremonial event, in which verbal exchange, artistic expression, and your reasoning is the core of overstanding. And in similar manner, Ground Nation, which is the Jamaica Music Museum's lecture series, uses audience participation, academic presentation, and artistic expression to promote core humanitarian values. Because what's in here is of benefit to everyone. It concerns Jamaica's music, which is Jamaica's um, main export, this is for Jamaica on the world. You travel to Africa and Europe and everyone talks about Jamaica's music and Jamaican musicians. And you could identify any Jamaican musician who is well known um, anywhere. But then you have famous, reputable business people and political figures when they travel, you'll not recognize them. But the musicians are always recognized, so too are the athletes. In the business report, the National Certification Body of Jamaica is encouraging companies to become ISO certified. Danita Rodney gives us the details in the business report. Virgin Atlantic announced on Thursday a daily service to London Heathrow from Montego Bay, Jamaica for the winter season. These flights will commence on December 12. The increased service to the London Heathrow Airport will provide travelers from Jamaica with a direct link to UK's iconic capital city alongside seamless connections onto Virgin Atlantic's network via London Heathrow. Caribbean County Manager Hannah Swift shared with the business desk the importance of providing such a service. I'm so excited by our now daily service from Montego Bay to London Heathrow, allowing more opportunity for Jamaicans to visit friends and family, conduct business or go on a dream vacation to Europe or connect onwards to the rest of the world. We recognize the importance of Jamaica in our network and are thrilled to be able to connect more people with our increased services. This is the first time in our history we are offering daily flights from Montego Bay and truly look forward to welcoming you all on board soon. The National Certification Body of Jamaica NCBJ is encouraging companies to get certified. Speaking with PBCJ News, manager of the NCBJ, Mrs. Navinia Willington Ford, says for greater efficiencies, companies should get certified. 
if it is that you want to see improvement in your processes based on efficiencies and you want to see effect effectiveness of your processes and your operation, then it would be very good for you to implement a standard such as the ISO 9001. This standard is uh, applicable to any entity, whether you are private or public, whether you are small in terms of a one-man band, or you are large, whether your process is simple or complex. The important thing is that this is an international acceptable standard with international business practice that is, a, that is benchmarked. And it is important as you look into sustainability of your company, ensuring that your organization is viable and that you're supporting the economic structure of Jamaica, it is important for you to implement a standard such as this and for you to get certified. She was speaking after the Public Procurement Commission certification ceremony. The PBC became ISO 9001 certified, which now allows the independent investigative body to operate at a higher level. For your market updates in foreign exchange trading for Thursday, August 25, the US dollar sold for an average of $151.57, the Canadian dollar ended trading at $117.16, the pound sterling traded for $178.44, and the euro sold for an average of $153.14. In JSC trading for Thursday, August 25, the JSC index advanced by 7,542 points to close at over 300,000 units. The junior market index advanced by 3 points to close at over 4,000 units. The combined market index advanced by 7,085 points to close at over 300,000 units. And the All Jamaican Composite Index advanced by 5,021 points to close at over 400,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 107 stocks of which 60 advanced, 30 declined and 17 traded firm. Stocks advanced for 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, 1834 Investments Limited and Barita Investments Limited. Stocks declined for AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, CAC 2009.5%, Cumulative Redeemable Preference Shares, and Caribbean Cement Company Limited. Trading firm were 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited Variable Preference, Access Financial Services Limited, and Blue Power Group Limited. The overall volume leaders were MFS Capital Partners Limited with over 5 million units, Wigton Windform Limited Ordinary Shares with over 4 million units, and Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares with over 2 million units. In regional stocks, in Trinidad and Tobago, Clico Investment Fund was a volume leader with over 60,000 shares, followed by Calypso Macro Index Fund with a volume of 380 shares being traded. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, Epley Caribbean Property Fund Value Fund was a volume leader with over 14,000 shares. They were followed by Goddard Enterprises Limited and Cave Shepherd and Company Limited, which traded 941 and 319 shares respectively. In market data for oil, oil prices rose as much as $1 on signs of improving fuel demand. Brent crude futures climbed $1.53 to $100.87 a barrel, and West Texas Intermediate crude rose $1.20 to $93.72. And that was the business report on PBCJ. I'm Danita Rodney. In regional news, starting in Trinidad, Prime Minister Keith Rowley says it was a big mistake to select Gary Griffith to be the Commissioner of Police. We have more in this CNC3 report. Strong words from the Prime Minister on Tuesday night. He says when he took office, he tried to find the best people who could serve Trinidad and Tobago regardless of party. Now it seems he has regrets. I take responsibility for giving him a chance. And ladies and gentlemen... That is the biggest mistake I've ever made. The audit into the firearms unit of the TTPS continues to be a thorn in his side, but Dr. Rowley is vowing to keep the details close to his chest. Previously, he said he would release part of the report in Parliament. But I'm not going to do what the last government did with live sport. Senior Pongful Cabal Queen... went and exposed a report 
about live sport, which involved a minister of government, and as a result of exposing the report in a particular way, the minister was able to go to the parliament, to the court, win the case. Griffith, meanwhile, has come out swinging. He accuses the prime minister of ignoring the real problems in the country. His reason and his justification is about firearms. It is the most comical thing I've ever heard. Because, Kitrawi, you should tell the country who is the very senior government minister that harassed me constantly to provide explosives for a friend in Tobago to get explosives without an OSHA approval. Who was the person who harassed me to get special firearms for himself to kill pigs? Who, who and his list of all his friends, long and distinguished, harassing me to get firearms fast track for them. Griffith says every murder in Trinidad and Tobago over the past three years has been committed with illegal firearms. Is this a dog whistle key drawly that you have sent to the present police service commission in the hope that they will not put me as number one in the merit list because you know it would be political suicide. The person who was able to lead the police service into an, a, a period where it was the highest public trust and confidence. The person that was assisting in ensuring that we had the highest reduction in crime. And that is your mistake, Kate Rowley. Griffith, who himself is vowing to be Prime Minister, says the country regrets selecting Dr. Rowley to lead it. Guyana's ambassador to China is hoping to partner with eight Caribbean countries through a multi-destination package targeting Chinese tourists. Ambassador Chu is on a mission to make the Caribbean more appealing to Chinese tourists. Ambassador Chu, during an interview with the newsroom in Beijing, highlighted the length of time it takes to travel to Guyana from China and the fact that there are no direct flights. And I think that for the tourists, spending all this time traveling to a single destination is not something that you might want to do. So I'm in discussion with my um, Caribbean colleagues to try to come together and do a multi-destination package. I think this is something that is, you know, very practical and something that we would um, embark on, you know, once China opens up back, you know, for um, tourism in and out. Barbados, Trinidad and Tobago, Grenada, Jamaica and Suriname are among the countries Ambassador Chu is in discussion with to launch her initiative. The Guyanese diplomat is currently the chair of the Caribbean Caucus of Ambassadors and discussions have commenced for the countries to host a joint event aimed at showcasing the rich, diverse culture. Taking into consideration the COVID-19 rules and regulations in China, Ambassador Chu hopes that this joint event can be held by the end of the year. In international news, families in the UK are bracing for an 80% rise in their energy bills. Government regulators have set limits on energy prices for nearly four years. However, with the cost of gas and electricity rising globally, prices are set to rocket. The comfort of a cup of tea that's about to get more expensive. Kim Eldridge lives with her mother in publicly subsidized housing. It has damp, uninsulated walls that leak heat during cold weather, and they fear that energy price hike will make heating their home this winter impossible. And the whole flat is riddled with mold and damp. We've not even hit winter yet and people can't afford to pay their bills. I don't know how anyone is gonna survive this winter without sitting shivering in their homes. Bills have already doubled, they're looking to double again, it just doesn't make any sense. The jump in wholesale and consumer fuel prices comes at a time when some energy companies have reported record profit. While some companies have pledged grants to help consumers, the raising of the price cap is still expected to have a devastating effect on millions of households. In sports, five-time world 100-meter champion Shellyanne Fraser-Price will do battle once more with double Olympic sprint champion Elaine thompson Herrell and world 200-meter champion Sharika Jackson, headlining the penultimate meet of the 2022 Diamond League campaign in Switzerland today, Friday, August 26. The Jamaican women who swept the final in Eugene a month ago will meet again in the 100 meters at 1.59 p.m. Jamaica time. When asked about blowing the 10.6 second mark, Fraser Price had this to say during yesterday's pre-meet press conference. Pretty much when I started the season, I ran 10.6 in um, Kenya and I was, you know, I was shocked because I was like, all right, and I traveled all the way from Kingston. I was a bit tired, but then, you know, my execution was good. And then I realized that for me, the key to running fast and, 
you know, having consistent times is making sure that I practice my technique. And then to be able to have, you know, that consistency is definitely wonderful and it shows that, you know, your hard work and, you know, staying true to your technique actually works. And I think for me, I've... A perfect race, I don't think a perfect race exists because of being a sprinter, really. There's always something, but for me, I want to have one of those races that everything works together or something that doesn't work, I'm able to counter that maybe at 60 or 70. So for me, I definitely think that watching the races and having my coach telling me what's happening, if I'm able to fix or tweak a, uh, like a few things, I'm definitely able, will be able to run faster than 10 six. Stating that this season has been challenging for her, Elaine thompson Harris says her biggest motivator is overcoming the challenges. Expectation coming out of last year, you know, it was high and I was looking forward for this year, but I said to myself, the way who I want my story to, to be written is not how it is going, but I know whatever God has in store, it will put together the right timing. But I'm just staying patient, keep working. Um, I always want to get my first world title, but I'm still working towards that. I don't want to be an Olympic baby, but I want that to be a part of my tally to be a defending world champs, and I am working towards that, of course. But... I'm, I'm really grateful, excited to um, achieve my first 100 meter medal, a bronze, and I, I think that I've never been happy even though I didn't fully prepare for that, but I still managed to get that. The 200 was not the best, but I moved past that. And I Sharing her thoughts was Sharika Jackson. She noted that she worked extremely hard in this year's preparation. She said competing with Fraser Price and Thompson Hera has made her better. I think last year took a toll on me in the 200 because 200 is actually one of my favorite events, not the 100. So for me not to be able to, not to be able to, advance I think that made me work extremely hard this year I got stronger in the gym and I think that paid off in me running 21-4. Jamaica Tala was defeated the St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots by 55 runs in the second game of the men's 60 at Warner Park in St. Kitts on Thursday. Scores Tala was 139 off 9.5 overs. Patriots 84 off 7.2 over. That's the news on PBCJ. Have a safe and wonderful weekend from our news team.